I'm Cody Taylor, and I work with uh, Santa Rosa County District Schools as a computer programmer. Um, I help our human resource department uh, maintain databases for teachers and student records, and um, whenever I'm able at night to reconnect um, with my relationship with God, um, I tend to ask my wife if, if it's okay to stay up a little bit, and I'm going to um, do some own personal Bible study. And um, she knows that that's a, a very um, worthy calling, so she allows me to enter into um, a Bible study where I can reflect on Scripture through an old passion, which is art, and using um, drawings to help deepen my understanding of Scripture. Um, and Pastor Paul, I think, became aware of um, that uh, he asked if I would be willing to help with last week's service, um, helping understand Acts 13. And I was very nervous. I, I did not know the details of Acts 13, and I knew I needed um, to dive into Scripture to uh, strengthen my understanding of it so it could pour out onto the canvas. And uh, I, I spent um, much of uh, my, my free time trying to complete this for this week, um, adding colors onto the outline that was done during last week's service, and um, I was nervous, and, and I told my wife, honey, it's, it's not yet finished, I hope it's okay, and, and um, Paul actually was very sweet, and he gave me a blessing and said, just bring it unfinished, um, and, and I'm sure we'll be glad to see what's been done, and with that blessing, I I tried to find a message in that coming from Paul um, to, to bring something that's unfinished um, reminded me that as disciples, whatever um, we intend to do with our gifts um, in life for the world, that we can never paint a perfect picture of God's kingdom. Um, that's almost an impossible uh, feat for any of us to do, but the, the point is that we try. And we try to do good works for others, and um, that was that was a blessing and a load lifted off of me when Paul said, "Just bring it unfinished, and, and we'll discuss scripture." And so, um, I'm going to do my best to um, reference the context of the church of Antioch um, as it was described in, in Acts, and what we're able to look at is a gathering around the Apostle Paul. Um, Paul was my first attempt to understand. Um, what, what miracle was taking place when he was actually with the church? And I, I went down a, a very long road of discovering who, who Paul was. He, was. he was Saul of Tarsus. Um, he was a student of the Torah. He went to temple. He was regarded as one of the best lawyers of the Sanhedrin in Jerusalem. And he was an, an enemy of the apostles. Um, he was known to be one of the strongest persecutors of Jesus's 12 apostles. And to have someone who held the cloaks of other priests of the Sanhedrin while they stoned um, Stephen when he was giving his testimony on the truth of the gospel and, and how much God, God loved the entire Jewish community and to regard that message as something that he despised, even though he, he knew growing up the, the joys that God wanted for his people um, to support that kind of oppression to such a joyful message was confusing to me when I started to research who Saul was. And it was interesting when, when you read more into Acts and you hear about his road to Damascus and how he became blind um, almost through an epiphany of what Jesus wanted for his life. And he, he receives an understanding of every um, type of persecution he's, he's been placing on these early apostles and imprisoning the early Christians. He almost seems to feel remorse um, about that. And I, I learned more about um, a man named Ananias um, you, you hear in Acts that Ananias was one of the apostles that was asked um, and inspired to go to Saul when he was approaching Damascus. And um, this representation right here of a high priest is um, supposed to be reflecting of the experience that Saul received when he was blind and Ananias 
came to him and said, I've been inspired, I've been told um, by Jesus that I'm supposed to, even, even with my fear of being imprisoned by you, I know you're here to imprison me, but even with that fear, I'm supposed to profess that Jesus loves you and he wants to restore your sight and it's out of that love that I'm coming to build a new relationship between you and my family and, and Christ's family. And when he finally regains his sight after that conversation, I wanted the joy of that epiphany that Ananias gave Saul to be represented here where he can, he can see himself in a new light. And the vision that he's receiving is um, paying homage to, to Stephen and his martyrdom. Um, I, I can't imagine seeing something like that take place, but to hear Stephen testify right before he loses his life and enters into the heavenly kingdom, he says, I see you, Lord, and you're at the right hand of the heavenly Father. And he feels just the comfort of entering into that kingdom. This is the vision that um, a, a Jewish um, rabbi is receiving um, after he's been um, receiving baptism. And in, in the context of Acts, and again, the Church of Antioch, you have another apostle named Barnabas. Um, Barnabas was one of the early supporters of the apostles in the church, and he gave up his land so that they could have a place to worship. Um, but he's a very humble servant leader, and, and you don't um, have a lot of context behind his family. You can tell that, like all of us at Cokesbury, he was someone behind the scenes, and he was someone who supported the ministry of the church. And I could definitely see all of us as Barnabas at Cokesbury, no matter what mission we might support, no matter how we use our talents to support uh, these, these services so people can have a, a more rich understanding of scripture. Um, I, I left him faceless because no one might know us in the community. They might not see our faces. They might just see the church and know that good work's being done. But all of us, like Barnabas, are, are baptizing others and preparing their hearts to receive the Holy Spirit. Um, this corner is supposed to represent the actual front edifice of the Church of Antioch. I had to do some, some research that it was coming out of the mountain. Um, where it was built, and like Christ is the cornerstone of the church that it's built on, this is coming at the base of the mountain, and the vision of Jesus in the clouds is laying his hand on the church to represent that faith in the church is the cornerstone and the foundation that we build up our belief in Christ. And then finally, um, seeking extra miracles that um, help enrich our understanding of God's overflowing love um, for everyone throughout the Old and New Testament. Um, we have the miracle of the, the orphan Gentiles of all nations. You have people who would line the streets when they knew that Jesus Christ was performing miracles and they would be maybe at the side of the road as he passed and they would reach out just to grab his robe in hopes that the power that he had to heal others might flow through his through his cloth that he wore and they could they could be healed and their family might just have the ability to be saved just by touching his clothes um, but the miracle of Acts 13, I, I began to understand was after someone who persecuted so many has been given a second chance and has been resurrected into a new calling, and after so many people who have sought to enter into a relationship, just like Saul began to enter into a relationship with Christ and the apostles, um, they heard the truth that God wanted them to hear through Saul that if, if they desired a relationship to save themselves, to save their families, they no longer had to fear the loss of a relationship. Uh, they, they didn't feel ostracized from the Jewish community anymore. They were welcomed into the fold. If you um, read the scripture of the Good Shepherd, they were finally um, fulfilling the words of Christ where a new flock was allowed to come into the heavenly kingdom. And Acts 13 is an embodiment of God's love for us all. He can redeem us um, 
He can make us into the best version of ourselves. He can allow his love to enter into new relationships with people who aren't of our immediate family, but then become a part of our community. And we can help support each other and give each other um, the support that's that's desired by them. Um, my, my gratitude can't be expressed in in a painting or, or words. Um, I'm, I'm just very thankful that, that Paul gave me a chance to have a deeper understanding of Scripture and walk with God, and, and I hope this enriches your understanding of, of Scripture um, coming from last week into this week. Thank you.